Hi there. Let's talk about a library called p5.speech. And some of the clues are in the name there. It is a library specifically designed to work with p5, uh, which you're already familiar with. And it's a library that lets you do some pretty cool speech stuff. Um, and what I want to use this library for especially is to introduce us to the basic process that you would follow learning any new library in JavaScript or frankly other uh, programming languages as well. Uh, in part because I think this is a, is a relatively gentle library. Um, I'm also going to practice not going on wild tangents. So, <laughs> so we're going to see how that goes. Uh, so without further ado, let's encounter p5.speech. So what is it? Well, it's a good question. You can probably guess from the title, but what I want to do is go through this, this basic process, um, which, as I said, I want us to get used to, to following any time that we're going to try and use a new library, whether it's in this class uh, or whether it's in your future as a dynamic and exciting programmer. It probably won't surprise you to find out that the very first step uh, that I would recommend is go to the website of the library <laughs> and find out about it. So let's go to the website for p5.speech. Uh, this is the, the website here. I want to just quickly say a couple of words about, about this. One, is which, one of which is just like, how would you have heard about p5.speech, right? Like, I told you about it. So this is a good way to learn about libraries is somebody tells you about it, maybe they send you the link on Discord or via a, a letter written in fountain pen. And that's a, a very legitimate and very common way to find a library. You might also have just been Googling because you're interested, you're wanting to do some, some speech stuff. Um, and so you were on Google looking for JavaScript libraries that use speech in P5 or something like that. You would probably come across the library that way. Um, it's also true that if you go to p5js.org and you go and have a little look at their list of libraries here on the left-hand side, uh, if you scroll down far enough on this page, which lists all of these libraries that are, are kind of designed to work well with P5, if you get down to the S's eventually, um, then you will find, uh, as you might imagine, p5.speech. And this will take us to the same website that we've got, um, that we've got just here. So here's the website. Um, so what should we do here? Really, the, the plan is to just take a look at what the website communicates to us about it. And, and most library websites have got a few common things that they do. Uh, one of them is just that they give you a little description. So p5.speech is a simple p5 extension to provide web speech synthesis and recognition API functionality. It consists of two object classes, p5.speech and p5.speechrec along with accessor functions to speak and listen for text, change parameters such as synthesis voices, recognition models, etc., and retrieve callbacks from the system. Now, depending on your, your comfort levels with JavaScript and the, the way that things work and the kinds of vocabulary uh, that people use, that may or may not be a comfortable paragraph for you. There might be things there that you don't um, really understand. That is completely fine. As you build up your knowledge, these things will make more and more sense. There are probably things in there that I don't understand or that I would have said differently. Uh, the key thing, I think, is really that first sentence, right? It's going to let us do speech synthesis, that is, make the computer talk, and speech recognition, that is, make the computer listen to us and hear what we are saying. Um, and that's, what, uh, that's what's exciting about it. So we're going to be playing around with that uh, in this series of videos. So that's the, the description. That gives us a sort of a basic idea of what's going on here, what the library is kind of for. Um, once we've gotten that sort of really broad overview, and we at least know the nature of the library, like it's not about making cakes with JavaScript, it's about speech uh, in JavaScript. I can hear my cat coming down the stairs. Um, the next thing to do, I think, rather than read more, is to look at whether there are some examples that can show you uh, what's possible uh, with the library. It's very, very uncommon uh, for a library not to provide some examples. So let's go look at those. Um, and we can find those just by scrolling down a little bit. Here they are here. Examples. So they have the world's simplest example just here. Uh, you can see that they're creating a variable. 
they're making something that they put inside it. They're using this word new, which we know from object-oriented programming means that they're creating a special kind of object from a class. It's this p5.speech thing. Uh, and then they want to make it say something. They say foo, which is the variable that they put it inside, foo.speak, and then a string of text, hi there. So you would expect the computer to say hi there, except in a British accent or something. Hi there. <laughs> um, foo is not a good name for variables. I wish they hadn't done that, but they did. So, you know, there's life. And then we also have a simple example here uh, for speech recognition. You can see it's a little bit more complicated. We'll get into the ins and outs of, of how this all works. Um, one of the things I will just preview as we look at these little code snippety examples is how they don't look like what you're probably used to uh, in P5. There's no setup, there's no draw, there's no mouse press. There's, there's, there's not the usual kind of set of things that you would expect if you were making a P5 program. And that, that's kind of unfortunate because it can make you feel like you don't know how to incorporate this into your program potentially. But we're gonna work on that. We're gonna get this, uh, this going. Down here, and maybe more importantly, in the more examples section, we've got some actual working examples. So let me make sure my speech is, my speech, my volume is turned up. If I click on this one. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. I had B. Five. Part. P. Five. Okay, so the main thing is being demonstrated here, right? Like I'm clicking, it's saying things. When I first loaded the page, it said something. This library is enabling uh, my this program here to to talk, uh, and we can see that again here. Testing one two three. Testing one two three. That's the default voice, I guess. So you know, she sells seashells on the seashore. Seashore. I think it's like that, right? She sells seashells on the seashore. Brilliantly done. Um, one of the things that you can see in this example, which we should uh, keep in mind and which will be emphasized as we go along, you, you've got some settings here. We can make it go faster. She sells seashells on the seashore. Oh, impeccable. She sells seashells on the seashore. Okay, I guess that's as fast as it gets. She sells seashells on the seashore. 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 Um, could be the beginnings of an excellent EDM track. Uh, I was just sort of interested in whether it would ever make a mistake. Do you think it would ever make a mistake? Do you think it would ever slip up? Probably not. It's a computer. That's something that's potentially interesting about this, um, I think. So we've got these two examples of speech that have enabled us really just to find out what it does, right? It makes the computer talk. Perfect. Uh, what does speech rec do? Let's check this one out. So it's asking if it can use my microphone. Obviously, if it's going to listen to me, it's going to need access to the microphone. So we'll say allow. She sells seashells by the seashore. Perfection. It heard me. Uh, it heard the words that I said that went into the microphone, they went into some kind of computer brain. Uh, thanks to p5.speech, the things that I said, the audio that I put into the system were translated into these words that are completely accurate. Uh, she sells seashells by the seashore. So that's the demonstration of this one, right? Like that we can say something and it can go into our program and it can be the text of what we said. A lot of possibilities there. Hopefully your, your brain is already thinking of some of them. Uh, and then one last example here, which is continuous recognition. Uh, the difference here is that it's listening to me all the time. And they demonstrate this in, a, in an interesting way. Up. Right. Down. Right. Down, left. Okay, that's a pipe, right? That's, that's what I was going for there. Pretty good. Uh, so the idea there is that it's always listening, and as I say things, so long as it's part of the vocabulary that it wants to hear, then it is going to to do these things. Um, up. There you go. You can see that there are some things to think about there in terms of lag, potentially, what kinds of things you might be able to make happen. It's a fairly inspiring example, despite the fact that it's, um, you know, it's pretty basic. Um, I think there's a lot to explore with an example like this. Uh, the other thing that you can do, having having done this, is just see uh, just a little bit how these basics get wound into a real 
uh, P5 sketch. So if we look at the source, for example, of the simple example, which was the one that just said um, testing one, two, three, which is down here, you can see where they've incorporated those two lines that they were talking about. So at the very beginning of the program, outside any functions, they're creating a variable and they're storing this p5.speech object inside it. Uh, they're using var here. We would always use let uh, because we are good people. So they'll make it up here. You could also considering making this um, in, in setup. And then they're having the computer say the thing here by using the same variable, my voice, but using a method that's inside the object. So my voice dot speak, which is the thing that tells it how to say things, and then a string that you want it to say. So in this instance, it's saying testing one, two, three, exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. Uh, you can see there's a ton of other stuff, right? Um, and you can look at that ton of other stuff if you're wanting to, to see some different ideas. Uh, there's, a, there's a few things going on in here. But if you're just looking at the very basic integration, uh, you can see that somewhere at the beginning of your program, you want to make your speech thing, the voice, the speaker. And then at some point, once it's being made, you can tell it to say things and your computer will say those words. In this case, they've done it in setup. We could do it somewhere in draw, potentially. We could do it in a mouse pressed or a key pressed or in some other situation. It's really going to depend on what we want to do with it. Uh, if we switch over to just have a quick look at the source for the simple recognition here, um, this one is mercifully simple. Uh, you don't, again, have to, have to understand all of this perfectly, but we can see a similar kind of pattern, at least at the beginning. You have to make one of these objects. This time it's a new p5.speechrec object. They're storing, storing it in a variable called myrec there. And that's the thing that's going to do all of the speech recognition work for us. And you can see that there's two basic things that they do here uh, to get it set up. The first one is maybe the, the, the more um, surprising one if you're not used to this idea. You will become used to this idea. It is a very common thing that we'll see in JavaScript, which is that myrec uh, here has a property in it. I kind of wish that I didn't keep opening up this uh, little window, but I do, so I'm sorry. It has a property called onResult. And onResult can store something in it, just like you would expect for the property of an object. But the thing that it stores in it is the function that should be called when the speech recognizer recognizes some speech, when it hears you have said something. So show result in this instance is this function here, right? So what we're saying when we say myrec.onResult is assigned show result is we're saying when there's a result, I want you to call the function show result so that I can do something with it. This is called uh, an event handler uh, function. It's a function that gets called when something specific happens, like hearing speech. It's very similar to something like mouse pressed, right? Which gets called when the mouse gets pressed. And we'll be using these all the time. So we'll have a lot of opportunities to get used to them. The second thing that we then do, having told it what to, what to do when it hears something, is we tell it to start. And that start is the thing that turns on the microphone. The browser asks you if it's allowed to listen to you, uh, and you allow it or you don't allow it. Um, and then, you know, things go on from there. So from that point on, it's listening. And then the other key thing here, of course, is this show result uh, function, which is the thing that's going to be called once there is a result. And you can see that there's a couple of uh, important things going on here. One of the important things is that they are suggesting here, it looks like that you have to check if there's really, really a result. It seems kind of weird, right? If, if this function is meant to be called when there is a result, why do I have to check if there is a result? <laughs> but apparently they, they, they feel that this is something that's important to do. So we need to check whether my rec.result value is true. If it's true, that means that there's a result for us to actually use. And then the other important thing we can see here uh, they're, using, they're using the result to just display it on the canvas. Uh, but helpfully, that means we can see that inside my rec.result string, when we've got a result, that's the thing that will contain the resulting uh, text that was set. So if we want to do something with that text, whether we want to um, display it on the canvas, or we want to make the computer say it back to you, or we want to do some other thing, uh, that's where that information goes. And really, because you know, the recognition thing is, is as simple as that in some ways, right? You say words, it turns it into a string, and then you, know, you can do whatever you want with that string. So that gives us the basic uh, perspective on how do you just get this thing up and running? And we're gonna try that in a second. So, um, you know, so don't worry about that. We're gonna be doing it ourselves to reinforce these ideas. Uh, the, the final other thing that I, we wanna do 
uh, on the website at least, is at least have a look at the documentation. And the, the big reason to look at the documentation is that the examples probably don't show you everything uh, that's possible with a library. And importantly, they don't explain everything. The idea behind the documentation is that it will, at least in an ideal world, explain how everything uh, actually works. In practice, that's not the way it goes. Some documentation is well written, some documentation is not well written, uh, and we have to do our best um, and ask questions on Stack Exchange <laughs> and the Discord or, or wherever you're, uh, you're getting your help from. Uh, but here we are, there's this bit called the reference, right? Some people would often call this an API reference, application programming interface reference, that's gonna tell you all of the things that the library can do. Um, so it's describing all of the things in this instance that the p5.speech class can do. This is the thing that we made an object out of to have the computer say things. Uh, so it's telling us that when we make one of these things, we can set the default voice that it should use when it's saying stuff. That's potentially a useful piece of information to know. Uh, and then if we just read through these methods, we might just learn things that are helpful. For instance, cancel tells us that we can stop a voice from speaking. So if we want to interrupt a voice while it's talking, we can do that. Uh, this one seems important. It lets us list all of the voices that are actually available to speak in because there's not just that one testing one, two, three voice. There's like a whole bunch of different voices uh, that we could use and that can uh, potentially be fun to play with. We should file that away. Uh, we can pause, we can resume, uh, we can set a specific language. Maybe we want to see what happens if we try and get this thing to speak in French instead of in English. Uh, we can set some important qualities of the way that it talks. We saw this in the example, right? You can set the pitch, so how high-pitched or low-pitched is the voice. Uh, you can see that it's telling us the range uh, of that, so it can be super low is 0 0.01 and super high is 2.0. That's the number that we would put in here as the pitch. Um, we can also set the rate. We tried that out, trying to get it to speak very quickly. We use set rate and then we tell it number that reflects how fast or how slowly it should say the words that it will be saying from then on, right? So these are fun things to play with. We've already encountered them a little bit. Um, as expected, we can set the voice so we can change what voice the thing is gonna speak in. Uh, we can choose the volume. We can actually tell it to say something uh, and we can tell it to stop saying things. So there's a few things there that we didn't necessarily know about just by looking at the examples. Uh, we don't have to like memorize this. We can refer back to it. We can look back at the examples as well. It's just a really good idea uh, to get in the habit of just browsing through these things and being like, oh, that's interesting. Um, I'm glad that that's there. There's some more things here. These are properties. Uh, so these aren't functions or methods. These are things that we can set. So should the voice interrupt itself? If you say start saying one thing, should starting to say another thing interrupt the previous voice? And then there's these things here, um, which we might get to a bit later on. These are various event uh, handlers. Another name for an event handler is a callback. These are functions that should be called when something happens, right? So we already saw the on result one uh, for the speech recognizer. The speech, the speech synthesis one also has these, right? So there's something that will be called when the voice starts talking. There's something that should be called when the voice stops talking. You can imagine that these could be very useful for conversation flow, for example, of knowing when the voice is starting and ending uh, without knowing how long it's going to take to speak. So that's the, that's the speech synthesis. Let's just have a quick look at uh, the speech recognition. Um, so you can set a default language for that as well. I guess that's what it's trying to interpret your speech as. Could be fun to, to potentially play around with. Uh, we know it has the start method, uh, which is where it starts listening, of course, um, to the microphone. Um, and then everything, everything else seems to be happening in the properties here. So we've got a property called continuous. Uh, continuous is that thing that we saw, right? Is it listening to you all the time and updating what it hears all the time? Or is it just listening to you just that one time until you pause and then it considers that to be what you said? Um, and there's a bunch of advice here, but that's the kind of the, the basic idea. One really interesting thing uh, here, which is kind of cool, is a little ethical flag from them. If you set the, the listening to be continuous, you're effectively hot micing the user um, and all of the data is potentially being sent to people like Google <laughs> for the purposes of, like, of, of recognition, right? But I, without any question, also for the purposes of scraping all of your data. So. That's a, there's a question as to whether you want to use continuous. I think it's gonna depend on your artistic um, and creative objectives. So um, we will, of course, feel free to play around with this stuff. Uh, there's this idea of interim results, like should it be reporting what it hears as it hears it or at the end of somebody speaking? 
Uh, there's a bunch of these um, event handlers or callbacks again that should happen at specific moments, like when it finishes recognizing speech, when it starts recognizing speech, and, and most importantly, the one that we saw, when it gets a result and it thinks it heard something. Um, this is a really interesting one that we didn't run into, result confidence. That's how much it really thinks <laughs> that what, you, what it heard is what you said, which is a very interesting concept, and like we experience this uh, all the time when I'm listening to my neighbors who speak Quebecois French, um, my result confidence is probably floating around 0.6 uh, or 60%. It's definitely not at 100%. <laughs> don't tell them that. Um, I often don't tell them that. And there's a couple of other things. This is one that I think we can potentially be interested in. Result JSON. Uh, that gives a full set of data returned by the speech recognition system. That sounds potentially interesting. Anytime you can get all of the information, it's worth at least looking at that information. So I think we should look at that uh, later on when we're playing around with this. Um, and then of course, we've also seen the result string, that's the actual text that was heard, and the result value, the thing that tells you whether or not uh, it thinks that it heard something correctly. So now we've scanned this, we've like noticed a few things that are kind of interesting. We've got some ideas based on the examples. So we've kind of got a picture of what this library does now, right? And it's worth spending this time uh, rather than jumping immediately into trying to do something, just reflecting uh, just for a little bit about what the library, library is and what it does. Um, so, you know, sit back and jot down a few notes, you know, pause the video or wait till I'm uh, finished talking in a couple of seconds. And just think about, like, what could I do with this? What's exciting there? How does this maybe fit into the kinds of things I'm interested in exploring? How does this fit into things that I do normally um, where it might be surprising? Like I, I'm used to making, I don't know, platformer games or I'm used to making interactive music visualizations or, or something else. Like you probably have kinds of things that you're comfortable and interested in making. What if you added speech synthesis to that? What if you added speech recognition to that? Uh, or you can just think about the, the potential all on its own. Like, what would it be funny to do with speech synthesis? What would be interesting or poignant to do with speech recognition? Uh, could you ask people to say affirmations? Could you make them tell jokes about themselves? Could you make them say things that are slightly uncomfortable? Uh, could you make the computer speak complete nonsense? Um, there are a lot of possibilities once you start just thinking about the technology itself. And that's something that we'll explore um, in an upcoming video. For now, um, I will say goodbye for this video. We're going to keep learning about P5 speech. Uh, and the next thing that we're going to do is, of course, make sure that we can get it running on our own system in our own P5 project. So come back for that one when you're ready. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, or at the very least, it's useful and you should learn it. <laughs> bye for now. Uh, nice to see you. But I didn't see you. But bye. For now. <laughs>